Tell us, do we really need a surveillance program like this? Well, you need one. Uh, you just don't need one quite this uh, big or this energetic. Uh, that, that's the problem. I think that's the reason why Edward Snowden decided to blow the whistle on it. When you say this um, energetic, what do you mean? Well, going after uh, turning the NSA basically onto the American public. Um, you know, there's not a person in the country that uh, doesn't have uh, uh, some of its uh, uh, information with regard to telephone calls inside NSA at this point. That wasn't the purpose the agency was set right. up for, and it's by far uh, uh, something that uh, shouldn't be done. Well, I want to talk to you about the evolution of the NSA. Here's a quote from your book from a number of years ago, a more innocent time and place. This, of course, after September 11th. The war was in an upward death spiral. The president's national ratings were below sea level, and Congress was in the hands of angry Democrats. It was a bad time to at last seek legislation. There's been an evolution of the NSA through time. Where do you think they will be in one or two years, Mr. Bamford? Well, at the present rate, they'll just keep growing and growing and growing. I did a cover story for Wired Magazine uh, last year on their new data center that they're building in, uh, in uh, Utah. It's a massive one million square foot it's facility uh, to, to accommodate everything new that they're pulling into the agency. So it's, you know, it's just growing and growing and growing uh, with all the money that uh, uh, the post 9 11 uh, windfall that it's been getting. Uh, Trish, the, 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 the facility in Utah is bigger than Sarah Eisen's shoe closet. It's well, that must be saying that something, right? That was first. Absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, here's the issue, and I want to bring Richard into this conversation as well, because, you know, it, it, Jim, we're living in a very different day and age. I mean, 50 years ago when this the NSA was first getting started and they were collecting data, we were in a different kind of warfare. Richard, what's different about today where, as you would argue, a program like this is more necessary? Well, the NSA, I mean, it goes back to 1949, in some cases earlier, before anyone had even thought of the Internet. And so the big challenge they've had to focus on for the, sort of the last 25 years is how to deal with this incredible growth in internet-enabled communications of all shape, form, and variety, from voice-enabled telephone to email, text messaging, <coughs> encrypted text messaging, cloud servers, video games with their own proprietary. And they, they, their mission is to be able to get into those when it threatens the United States, and we, we need to get into them. Dr. Falkenrath, I thought one of the great distinctions this week, and this was Henry Blodgett's really good work at Business Insider, moving this dialogue forward. And one of the distinctions is there's a court order and there's a bad person and name the country and we go after them. We all get that. But then there's this idea of collecting data, of just mining data and storing it away for a rainy day when you may have to go into it and search it. Are we doing that? And is that part of what James Bamford's NSA should do? Um, it is something that we're doing, and it is a major legal change. In fact, in the old days, you didn't regard it, you regarded it as collection as soon as you tapped into the wire that was connecting two people for a phone call. Now what happens is the, is the agency is enabled to ingest massive amounts yes. of data and then is reviewed a second time before it goes and accesses them. Who did that, James Bamford? Are we supposed to blame somebody for that or ask them to take a victory lap? Who allowed them to ingest massive amounts of data just for the sake of it. Well, uh, that's the evolution of the NSA. Uh, every time there is an incident of some sort, the uh, first cry is we need more data, we need more access, we need more uh, capabilities. Um, I've interviewed a great number of people at NSA, and they, a lot of them have the same view that uh, uh, Mr. Snowden had. Uh, I interviewed, uh, uh, for my Wired piece, I interviewed Bill Benny. He was one of the most senior officials at NSA. He was uh, the person who basically created the algorithm that uses all this uh, data, collects all this data. And he left the agency uh, because of, uh, after almost 40 years, because of all this excessive eavesdropping on, on Americans in the United States, uh, uh, targeting their communications and so forth. So, uh, and, I, and I suppose part of the question, though, numerous other people that, are, uh, that have left. Is, I'm sorry? Yeah, I suppose part of the question, James, is, you know, if they're in fact uh, eavesdropping on all these innocent Americans, as you put it, um, are they actually doing any good here at all? In other words, have they been able to prevent another 9-11 in part because of this, this cyber technology. Has it done any good? 
not that I can say. I've written three books on the NSA, numerous articles and a documentary for PBS. I've interviewed numerous people. I haven't seen any uh, any uh, uh, useful outcome from all this surveillance No useful at all. outcome, no, 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 Richard stop there. Really, yeah, Richard Falkreath, jump in here and talk about the utility of this to intelligence agencies. I think one of the great distinctions, Trish, over the weekend is the beginning of the intelligence people saying, wait a minute, this helps each and every American. Is that true? Uh, I, I think it does. I'll tell you, eight years on the inside in both the White House and the NYPD, there's no, no instrument, no tool in the toolbox more powerful than electronic surveillance for the government in trying to protect our interests from terrorist attacks. Okay, Senator Obama had a stance. He had a position. And I thought over the weekend it was amazing how they showed his migration to being president. And as somebody said, Ari Fleischer said out on Twitter, I retweeted it, something to the effect it's the fourth Bush term in intelligence because President Obama has done much like President Bush did. Is that true? It is true. Uh, and Ari's being a little provocative there, but in fact, President Obama, the candidate and the senator, was against these sort of things. And what happens is once you become president or you enter the national security community, you're privy to the actual details, inner workings of the program. You see the value. And here you see a man who really is a liberal constitutional law professor who comes around now and is doing things which the civil libertarians and the privacy groups well, you know, are Richard, as outraged as they were with Bush. Pe people are, in fact, outraged. They don't like the idea idea of this in any way, shape, or form. It's very big brother feeling. How do you start to change public opinion if, as you say, this is one of the key tools in thwarting terror attacks? I'm not sure they're going to be able to change public opinion. I mean, step one was keep it a secret. And, you know, this was going on for years and try not to tell anyone because there are multiple reasons. Now that it's no longer a secret, what do you do? I don't think they're, I think they're going to struggle. And uh, there will likely be some mm -hmm. retrenchment that results from this. <clears throat> Certainly abroad, where these activities may, are illegal in some states, whereas here they seem to be lawful. James Bamford, last word to you. If you had to write an epilogue to your book today, what would you write? Well, this would be the uh, chapter I'd write, what happened here, the whistleblowers. There's been more whistleblowers, national security whistleblowers, in the last seven years uh, than in the previous uh, 50 years, probably. Uh, so I think there's a, a, a large group inside. Obviously, there's a number of people on the outside that keep pushing for more and more, and they think that they're helping the country, which they really aren't. But the people inside are saying... Uh, this is going too far, and they're risking their lives, basically, to uh, try to expose the, the secrets to the American public.